This is Darren with Spread Edge Capital. This week I will highlight a Coco calendar spread that was published in the Spread Edge newsletter this past weekend. Three weeks ago, I recommended a September-December Coco calendar spread that is off to a great start. I opened two units of this spread because the expiration on the front month is around six months out. While I like to mix up my trades across a variety of markets, the best trade this week is once again a cocoa trade. This trade will use the July and December expiration months, which will bring my overall exposure as shown on the right. My main motivation for the cocoa trade is the technical action over the past three weeks. Note that three weeks ago, prior to the original trade, Cocoa was bumping up against overhead resistance and appeared likely to fail to break through. As you can see on the right, Cocoa did break through briefly, but was not able to maintain and sustain the breakout. Heading into a seasonally bearish period, Cocoa appears destined to retrace back to lower levels. In addition to the technical action, there are several indicators on the commodity outlook that caught my eye. This page shows the Commodity Outlook Summary page that is included in the newsletter. The Commodity Outlook includes weekly price change, seasonality, commitment of traders, relative positioning, CTA positioning, relative strength, and the commodity carry and roll. Each of these indicators are explained in detail in the weekly newsletter. Looking at the Outlook Summary, there are three things that jump out at me. First is seasonality, second, commitment of traders, and third, relative price and positioning. I will review each of these indicators in more detail on the following pages. Please note, trading futures involve substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. There are no guarantee of profits no matter who is trading your account. Seasonality data is generated by Seasonalgo. Entry and exit dates are analyzed and scored for every possible expiration month combination. Scores are based on a proprietary formula that considers average profit, drawdown, and win percent over the most recent 15-year period. Negative values indicate sell, positive indicate buy, blanks indicate no significant seasonal trend. The higher the value, the stronger the historical seasonality trend. Note that COCO has had strong bearish seasonality scores for the past several weeks. These scores are based on the entry date and extend out through the close dates in July. So there's lots of time for the seasonal impact to manifest. Commitment of trader data, commonly referred to as COT, is generated by peak trading research using data published every week by the CFTC. Hedge funds are price drivers in the agriculture markets. Peak uses machine learning algorithms to provide daily fund position estimates in context around how extended long, represented by red, or extended short, represented by green, the funds are on the date listed on the report. Funds are extended long on COCO contracts as indicated by the red shading. In addition, managed money traders added record new longs of nearly 23,000 contracts during this COT week, which has historically been a strong bearish contrarian signal for the weeks that follow. COCO prices have dropped 14 out of the last 18 years in the three months that follow big inflow events. The next section of the Commodity Outlook is Relative Price and Positioning. Relative positioning is oversold versus overbought on the horizontal axis. This looks at commitment of traders' current net position compared to COT data over the most recent 24-month period. Relative price is cheap versus expensive on the vertical axis. This is a comparison of the front month current price compared to the front month price over the most recent 24-month period. Coco continues to be amongst the most overbought and expensive markets in the ag complex. 
Markets can stay elevated in relative price and position for extended periods. However, the other indicators presented points to cocoa returning to more normal levels. Finally, a quick look at the spread chart indicates a good setup for this trade. Note that the current price, which is represented by the black line, is consistent with the 5-year and 15-year historical patterns, which is represented by the red and blue lines. As mentioned, I'm adding to my cocoa position by selling the July-December calendar spread. This will bring my total position to short 1 July, short 2 September, and long 3 December. To recap, I like this trade for the following reasons. Cocoa failed to hold an upward breakout above the downward trend line and appears destined to retrace the lower levels. Two, seasonality is exceptionally bearish all the way out through July. And third, funds are extended long and added a record amount of new long contracts, which is historically a contrarian indicator. And finally, cocoa is expensive and overbought. You can participate in the spread edge strategy in two ways. Both involve your broker, your account, and your money. This can be done through a subscription service where you place the trades yourself based on the recommendations posted in advance in the weekly newsletter or through a professionally managed account for the standard management and incentive fees. Both options have identical trades and strategy. That's all for now. Please like, share, and subscribe. To subscribe to the newsletter, go to www.spreadedgecapital.com forward slash products.